morning. <laughs> See who comes in this morning. Morning, Mary and Barbara. Great to see you. Well, see your profile picture. <laughs> Thanks for joining me this morning. See who else comes in. I think that's Miranda. I'm not quite sure if that's her cat. <laughs> Good morning. Morning, Terence. Good morning, people. <clears throat> I'm sorry if it's a bit echoey this morning. I'm in my office and I forgot how echoey it is. <laughs> There's no ceiling. Um, I have a roof. <laughs> They've not stuck me outside somewhere in a shed, but it's quite echoey in here and I forgot until I just started talking. <laughs> so um, hopefully that's not too distracting for you. Morning, Claire. Oh, it's Claire's cat, not Miranda's. <laughs> Morning, James, who's at work? <laughs> Skyrim. Um, so, yes, it's great to see you. Oh, hang on. Whilst you're all clicking in, some kind of AVG is going on. Switch that off. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, that's it. Morning, Mavis. Hope you're all well and... Um, and yes, we'll see you in a bit, Janine. Yes, I'm at church. So we're reading the last, well, no, we're the second to last chapter of Proverbs. So if you want to turn there in the Bibles, if you're following um, Proverbs chapter 30, we're nearly there. This is the last one that I've, I'm doing for this week. Um, and we're going to change it a little bit with devotions. Um, for the next week, I think Luke and I will be doing something combined. <laughs> Not sure what that looks like yet, but hey, worth a tune in just to, just for the laugh. <laughs> so yes, and then Terence will be finishing off Proverbs 31, which is an interesting one tomorrow. Um, a wife of noble character. So I'll be really interested, Tez, to see what you're going to pull out um, of that one. Uh, but yeah, Proverbs 30. And um, I'm going to read it through and just pull a couple of thoughts out. But before we get on to that, just to remind you, we've got prayer meeting tonight at 7.30 uh, via the Zoom app or website or whatever it is. <laughs> um, and so you can get the details for that on our website and Facebook page. Um, so that's that. It'd be great to see you. Just 40 minutes, not a lot of time, but hey, we get to the point we pray together and it's really good fun. Um, yeah, being together. Okay, Proverbs 30. Morning, Charles and Frida. Proverbs 30. Here we go. It's a bit of a longish chapter, so bear with. And it's the NIV version I'm reading from. The sayings of Aga. Now, I had to... Um, I always do this. I put it in Google, how to pronounce words. I do it all the time because I, I like to get it to pronounce things right. Um, but it, a lot of it is in American accent, so I could be pronouncing it American. <laughs> but we're going to go with Aga because that's what it told me. So that's it. The sayings of Aga, son of Jaka, an oracle. This man declared to Ithiel, to Ithiel and to Uckel. I didn't pronounce I didn't put them in the pronunciation on Google. Just anyway. Okay, verse two. I am the most ignorant of men. I do not have a man's understanding. I have not learnt wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy One who has gone up to heaven and come down. Who has gathered up the wind in the hollow of his hands? Who has wrapped up the waters in his cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And the name of his son, tell me if you know. I love this next verse. We're going to look at this a little bit later. Um, every word of God is flawless. I love it. 
He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Two things I ask of you, O Lord, do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of God. Do not slander a servant to his master or he will curse you and you will pay for it. There are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers, those who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not cleansed of their filth, those whose eyes are ever so haughty, <laughs> um, whose glances are so disdainful, those whose teeth are swords and whose jaws are set with knives to devour the poor from the earth, the needy from among mankind. The leech has two daughters, give, give, they cry. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that never say enough. The grave, the barren woman land, which is never satisfied with water and fire, which never says enough. The eye that mocks a father, that scorns obedience to a mother, will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley. Morning, Pete. Um, will be eaten by the vulture. Hey, this is really positive, right? <laughs> There are three things that are too amazing for me, four that I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a maiden. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I've done nothing wrong. Under three things, the earth trembles. Under four, it cannot bear up. A servant who becomes king, a fool who is full of food, an unloved woman who is married, and a maidservant who displaces her mistress. Four things on earth are small, yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. Conies are creatures of little... Is it conies? <laughs> is that a creature? Conies? Conies? Let me know what a coney is, someone. <laughs> um, conies are creatures of little power, yet they make their homes in the crags. Locusts have no, in, no king, yet they do advance together in ranks. A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. There are three kings that are stately in their stride, four that move with stately bearing, a lion mighty among beasts who retreats before nothing, nearly there, a strutting root, rooster, a he-goat, and a king with his army around him. If you have played the fool and exalted yourself, or if you have planned evil, clap your hand over your mouth. <laughs> for, I'm sorry, for as churning the milk produces butter, and as twisting the nose produces blood, so stirring up anger produces strife. I love the Bible. It makes me laugh. Okay, there's some straight, very strange verses in there. Um, I want to pick out mainly the, the first part of um, Proverbs 30. So this Proverbs is written by a man called Aga. 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 Aga do. <laughs> Oh, I've lost it. Aga. Um, and we don't know much about him. It says other people, some scholars think that um, it was actually Solomon who changed his name and wanted to throw in a few riddles and write it a bit differently. Um, others feel or think that he was like a teacher. Um, but I don't know. I think he was a man in his own right. I personally think he is somebody, a literal man called Aga. <laughs> um, and he writes about in this um, proverb, it says actually in the message version that he's a skeptic. He refers to himself as a skeptic. Um, and he actually, I actually like the message Bible, the way that it, it portrayed this uh, proverb, but I wanted you to read along with me and, and I didn't want to put a stumbling block in the way if you're reading from a different version. But yeah, he, he was a bit rude, it says. He was a bit rude in the way he says things. and. And he was a skeptic. He didn't really understand about God. He didn't know. He, he says he lacks in wisdom and knowledge about the things of God. And um, it says, who needs God? In the message Bible, he writes, who needs God? I can do whatever I want. <laughs> he was not, um, he hadn't revealed, he wasn't 
the word of God hadn't been revealed to him. And um, so, but he then begins to discover throughout the, the, as we've read through Proverbs, that the importance of how he needs God. Um, Agar learns that God's word can be understood even by people like him, who is a skeptic. Now, you may know people in your life who are skeptical, skeptical about this Christianity lark, um, about God and who he is. And, and um, you, you might know those people in your life. And it's difficult, isn't it, to um, to speak to those those people about him. And um, But, you know, the best way in which we can be a good witness of the gospel is simply how we live our lives, right? The skeptics will find it unusual, the way that we, we react to situations that we find ourselves in, uh, the way we respond in situations may be different. It may look more honorable. It may look like um, a spirit of forgiveness. It may look so very much different into the way the world or the skeptics would um, view certain things. And um, you we're living proof of, of that God is real because it's the word of our testimony isn't it our testimony our lives are um is what proves god for us and you, you we talk about our testimony as how it's um they're so personal to us and and nobody can take that away from us nobody can say that we're lying because <laughs> it actually did happen those things that those our lives have been turned around by god uh, nobody can can argue against that but Agar recognises that God's word is pure. And it's in that verse 5 where it says, um, Every word of God is flawless. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. A shield. In Psalm 12, 6, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words. Um, oh, as, <laughs> as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times i love that i love the imagery of that can you imagine yourself just sitting there with things just coming at you at all angles and yet you are covered by a shield the shield of god the word of god that just covers us the uncontaminated word of god it's pure it's flawless there's nothing that can get in it because it's so pure it reflects who god is i love that imagery um, the, the, the shield protects us against the enemy, it extinguishes the darts, it defends us. Um, and we are totally protected by the flawless, the pureness, the uncontaminated word of God. Agar recognised that people had messed up God's, God's word. Um, they began to change it, messing with the truth. And um, we see that, don't we, right at the beginning of the Bible in Adam and Eve, when the devil comes to her and says, did God really say that? Did God really say those things? Really? Did he really say that? And that was sowing seeds of doubt. And that's when people started to doubt the word of God, doubt who God is. Um, they've, people have added to the word or they've either deleted or taken away words um, from what God had originally said. There are many different versions of the Bible, right? Um, and whether you prefer a version or not, some people feel like it's not the accurate word of God. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's the Holy Spirit um, that shows us what the Bible says. It makes the word come alive to us. It brings um, revelation um, to us. And then in the end, Aga, Aga <laughs> recognises the word of God for what it is. It's for us to read, it's for us to learn from and to obey and to live, um, live according to the word. It is pure, it's undefiled and we must not allow anyone or anything to take away or add to um, the word of God. So when life hits us, when we face challenges, when it struggles, we can take comfort in the word of God. The words written in this book are powerful. It will change our lives. And it's so important that we digest the word of God. Um, because when we face situations, things will just come to mind. The Holy Spirit will remind us of those things. And it's, that's why it's so important to get the word of God in us. The Bible can help us to move from being sad to happy, from sick to healed, all simply by getting into the word of God and have it written on our hearts. 
if you believe what you read and act on it then it will change your life and that's what will influence those skeptics influence those people around us who are not all that convinced about who god is god's word is flawless it's pure it's uncontaminated so i just want to challenge yourself this is it really just to challenge yourself and as we're coming to the end of these um, daily devotions um, just challenge yourselves to dig deep into the word of God maybe it's a certain topic you want to to look at and study maybe it's something that you're going through maybe you you struggle with anger or maybe it's um, uh, um, I don't know the fruits of the spirit I don't know but you can find so many devotions if you download an app called the U version app um, it's got so many different devotions that you can uh, use and apply to your life and so many it's really really good and I, I, um, I use that as well as my own daily devotions every morning so get into the word study the word and um, apply it to our lives amen okay we pray for you and then you can head off for your day um, Thank you, Jesus, that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. I thank you, God, that you created us to worship you, to glorify you, to live lives that honours you. And God, I just pray for anybody here, Lord, who maybe feel, maybe themselves feel a little bit sceptic, doubting the word of God and, and doubting, are you ever going to come through? Father, I pray that you will, by your Holy Spirit, come and reveal yourself to them. Um, open up scriptures, make scriptures come alive to people, apply it to their lives in Jesus' name. And Father, I just pray for blessing on them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, just to remind you, prayer meeting tonight on Zoom, 7.30. And yes, look forward to listening to Terence's devotion on Proverbs 31 tomorrow. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye.